Hey, 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 this is Beverly. I will not be denied Bozeman. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Be sure and share this broadcast with your friends and your family. Be sure to turn on the notification bell so that you'll know when I drop a new video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And again, thank you guys. I appreciate you stopping by to check on little old me. And I just wanted to share something with you today. And I just wanted you to know that we are in the slow cooker because... If you were born after like 85, 86, 87, you might not even know. Or I would just say if you were born in the 90s and above, you might not know what a slow cooker is. It's better known as a crock pot. If you still don't know what that is, you might have to go to a YouTube channel and look up what somebody does with a slow cooker. But for everybody else, you know what a slow cooker is. And if you take a look at your life, on a regular basis you're going to have some situations that make you stop and just look up at god and say for real for real there are some things that happen to us that happen around us to people we know it make you scratch your head make you fold your arms stick your lips out stomp your feet and you're just like i just don't believe this i'm not talking about somebody cutting in front of you in traffic and then driving real slow or your coworker taking their time about getting you their part of the report so you can finish your work. That's paper cut stuff. I'm talking about the big stuff that make you have to get somewhere and sit down, make you get away from people and cry and get it out so you don't hurt nobody. I'm talking about stuff like that. When those things happen, that means we are in the slow cooker because God is working on us show sure enough to prepare us for something. Something that at this particular time, we ain't quite ready for it. Now, we all know how a slow cooker works, right? And we have to state the meat and the potatoes and carrots and whatever else is in there. It has to sit for a long time, for hours. But we're going on about our business. And when we come back to it, is done right so that's kind of how life is when we are going through things and we just can't really understand why or we're going through stuff and we're just like when is this going to end when is this person going to act right when are these kids going to act like i raised them when is this job situation going to turn around so that I can really enjoy myself at work. We all are going through whatever it is that we're going through, right? And so we have asked those questions and we continue to ask those questions. And we might not get an answer at all, let alone a little answer later on. So let me go ahead and provide you with an answer right now. We are going through the slow cooker, cuz. If you have told God, I'm going to do what you told me to do. I'm going to do your will for my life. Or if you just even have a vision that's definitely going to benefit other people, you're going to go through those things. I mean, life is going to happen to everybody, but it's kind of like when you have a, a, a vision in front of you that's really beneficial to other people, or you say, God, I'm going to do that thing you told me to do. He's got to do some work in us. And I say us because I'm in the slow cooker too, because real talk. He's pulling those things out of us by making us like in when we leave the slow cooker alone, we come back. We come back every now and again, maybe to add seasoning or to stir and make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. While we are sitting still in life and things are happening to us, he's pulling things out of us that we can't use anymore. Whether it's stuff that we learned when we were kids things that we picked up when we were dating folks, when we were hanging out with folks, we knew we didn't have no business hanging out with them. We picked up those bad habits, that pitiful way of thinking. We can't carry those things, especially if they're negative. We can't carry those things to another level. We can't use those same tools when we're trying to be beneficial to the kingdom of God because we use those things to do other things. So there's no way we can take those and do good with it. So when we are in the slow cooker, 
God is evaluating our speech, our actions, our thoughts, our promises, all of that good stuff. And anything that's going to hinder us from completing the task, he's got to take it out. And it doesn't happen overnight. It does not have as much as we would like to make changes to ourselves. Those changes don't happen overnight. Even if we say I'm done with something and we don't touch it anymore, there's most of the time there's a desire to go back and do it, pick it back up again. And for us to do what it is we're supposed to do, we have got to, got to, got to get rid of certain things. So sitting still in that slow cooker, that's God removing those things. And there's not a whole lot you can do. When you said yes, bam, that was it. He put the lid on. And ain't nothing you can do about it but endure. We're supposed to have the right attitude while we are sitting in this crock pot because folks are watching us. And some people will come along and try to turn the switch on the slow cooker from low to high and try to make it even more uncomfortable for us. And we have to watch out for that. No, they have no business touching our crock pot, but can you believe this right here? God may have told them to go turn up the heat. Because if you can't stand a particular person or they hurt you or they can't be trusted or whatever, how you react to what they did to you will determine how long you stay in the crock pot. Get with that. And that can be part of the test. Mm. He's allowing them to torment you to drag your name through the mud, even take stuff from you. Promise stuff and break the promise just to see if you're going to react the same way you've always acted. If so, you're not ready to come out the crock pot. You're not ready at all because what he's having you to do on the next level or later on down the road, is going to require you to keep your cool. And if you're flying off the handle, cussing people out, threatening people going upside their head, beat them to the white meat, how can God use you like that? I'm talking to myself on that one. Whew. How can God use you? When you are using, when you are reacting in the same way that you always acted. And you got folks like this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. They say and do something in their secret conversations, in those private group chats. Watch this, watch this, watch this. They say and they do stuff. And then you react exactly the way they wanted you to. Or worse, I told you. Yep, I told you. That's what they'll be saying about you. But if you will allow God to pull those things out of you, they can't say I told you. They, they just can't. You're not giving them a stick to hit you with. And what I mean by allowing God to pull those things out of you, what I mean is we know we know that there are things about us that just, we just need to stop or we need to start. We know what those things are, but we're just not honest with ourselves because it hurts. It hurts. Oh, I'm a living witness. It hurts when you are used to telling people how you feel in the form of I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. You ain't going to talk to me in any old kind of way. I'm going to go ahead and let you know. But in the moment that you get ready to lay them out, God says, shut your mouth. And you got it. You have a split second to make a decision. Do I let them have it because they deserve it and teach them not to keep messing with me so they'll leave me alone? Or do you shut your mouth and be obedient and let them smile in your face and go back and tell how you were too much of a punk to stand up for yourself? 
I had to do that. That's how I can stand here today and tell you I know how to keep my mouth shut when I need to. But if you don't say keep my mouth shut and I feel like I'm supposed to, that's a oof, that's a little battle right there. But I immediately keep my mouth shut when he tell me to. Now, I even get into the mode of when I know I have to deal with certain people, keep conversation short. Don't go around them. Or go ahead and have the mindset of whatever they say, you just going to smile. And don't give them no ammunition. And they just keep poking and keep poking. They asking for it. And I'm on the verge. But he will step in on time and make them leave or tell me, just go ahead on. I know what I'm talking about. Those particular things, it might not be your mouth. It might be your actions. It might be your attitude. It might be your giving. It might be in your taking. You are the only one who knows what that is. And those things that we know we need to change, we can go ahead and start working on it. Don't We don't need to sit, honestly, we don't need to sit here and wait for God to pull everything out or put us in situations to where we are forced to do those things or forced to not do those things. Why? Why wait? It hurts like a big dog. It really does. But you will get to the reward faster. And the reward might not be for us. The reward might be for somebody else. My husband today was out and about. And he was on his way back home. And he said that the Lord spoke to him and told him to go see somebody. And he wasn't going to do it. Because it was, you know, not something he wanted to do. He was ready to come home. But he was obedient. And because he was obedient, he met somebody new who spoke into his life and confirmed some things that he and I had been talking about. And I told him when he got through telling me the story, I told him I could see it in my mind. It was like God was laying out some breadcrumbs. Like Hansel and Gretel had laid out some breadcrumbs so they can find their way. I feel like when we are obedient and, 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 and not do the things that we want to do, but the things we know we're supposed to do, even though it's inconvenient and very uncomfortable, God will show us it might be in the smallest way. He will show us that he has not left us alone. And because of, I think that because of the things that we are going through, not just because of the pandemic or because of the, the, the craziness that's going on, but because we have a lot of inner wars. You know, we have a lot of inner wars and we have to watch the people around us go through their go through. It ain't nothing we can do about it because we have those situations. We are relying on God to at least let me know you still here. At least that's my cry. Let me know. I mean, he said he'll never leave us, nor would he forsake us. And I believe that. But sometimes you just got to cry out. Just let me know. Let me know you're still here. And he'll just do those little things like that. But I believe that comes after we hear his voice and do what he tells us to do. That is my opinion. But I can state this fact right here. We are in the slow cooker because I'm ready to get out this thing. I don't know about you. So I'm going to do whatever it is I can to hurry up, hurry the process along as far as what I can do. There's only but so much I can do, but there is some stuff that I can do. I'm going to work on my process. I'm tired of being up in this crock pot. I'm ready to get out. But anyways, that's me and how I do it. So that's about it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I appreciate it so much. Be sure and share this broadcast with your friends and your family. Remember to release your genius. Pull out the impossible every day. You will have whatever it is that you say. So be positive when you speak, queen.